Live from WRAL News Headquarters in Raleigh, your number one source for local news. WRAL News, coverage you can count on. I'm Brian East, live on the WRL Breaking News Tracker in Raleigh this morning, where crews have battled a house fire here in the early morning hours. I'll tell you where this is and how many people were displaced by this fire. And you want to bundle up as you head out the door. We just dropped to 30 degrees. There's a bit of a wind chill to deal with as well. I'll show you what it will feel like when you step out the door. Breaking news. Just hours ago, Raleigh police arrested a 14 year old for shooting on Pool Road. That teen now faces a murder charge. Staff, teachers, and community members at more than 30 schools in Durham will participate in walk-ins this morning. This is a live look at Merrick Moore Elementary School. The demonstrations happening as a show of unity during the district's staffing crisis. We'll explain exactly what that is and what's going on here to get your Wednesday started. We're glad you're with us. I'm Jeff Hogan. And I'm Renee Chu. Coat weather once again out there. I definitely wore my big puffy coat. Jeff, did you wear a coat this morning? <laughs> I may have darted in the building. Not quick. cold enough. <laughs> it's going to warm up later. I know. I that's think. true. That's true. It's <laughs> going to be like February. Elizabeth Gardner, I know you had your black puffy oh, coat on. Oh, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. I would have had like six layers on if I thought I could get away with it. Right now, it looks beautiful outside. Our skies are clear. And this is a live look at Memorial Auditorium there as we look down Fayetteville Street. We check out temperature 30 degrees. Our wind has died down so it's calm. It was about five uh, miles per hour uh, last time we checked in. So let's look at wind across the region. There's still a few spots where it's a little breezy. I'm looking at eight miles per hour in Fayetteville and Goldsboro, six in South Hill, but it's light in Clinton, the Triangle, and up around Roxboro. So uh, we don't have a wind chill everywhere, but it, it's just, just cold in Roxboro. Look at that. It's 25 with a wind chill of 25. The temperature's on the left and the wind chill is on the right. So it feels like 18 in South Hill. It feels like 27 in Goldsboro. It feels like 23 right now in Fayetteville and 24 in Southern Pines. So it's um, winter is just holding on out there. It is February, certainly. Our temperatures will be in the low 50s this afternoon, but it will likely feel like 40s with the wind chill. I'll walk you through the wind chill for the entire day. Plus, take a look at our rain that's uh, arriving just in time for the weekend. Coming up, Brian. Elizabeth, Wednesday morning at 6.02, and we're looking good around the triangle with no trouble showing up anywhere in Wake, Durham, or Orange County this morning. Taking a look at those major approaches into Durham, not picking up any problems on 85. I-40 is looking good in both directions through South Durham between Chapel Hill, Hillsborough and Durham. We're not picking up any delays. And right now, all of your major approaches into Raleigh are looking clear. Just a one minute backup showing up on Southbound 87 coming in from Nightdale. I'm Brian East, live in the WRL Breaking News Tracker in Raleigh this morning where crews have put out a house fire here in the southeast part of town. I want to get you right to the video from the WRL Breaking News Tracker. It'll show you what this scene looked like. Fire broke out just after 4 this morning, and it's hard to see some of the damage, but it's pretty extensive inside this home. It's off of Lofton Place, which is near Sanderford Road here in the southeastern part of Raleigh. Crews got here and put that fire out as quickly as possible. I'm told at least three people were here at the time. The Red Cross did just show up here about uh, two minutes ago to help them out as they are going to be displaced from this fire. Investigators will go in whenever it is safe to do so to try to determine what exactly caused the fire. I'll stay on top of that part of the story and keep you updated. Live in Raleigh, Brett East, WRL News. More breaking news in Raleigh. A 14-year-old has been arrested and charged with murder. After midnight, Raleigh police confirmed the teen is in custody, accused of shooting a man on Pool Road. The shooting happened around 3.30 Monday afternoon. Sky 5 and the WRL Breaking News Tracker were live at the scene shortly after it happened. Police say the victim, Amari Goss, died after being shot several times. In just about 40 minutes, a show of unity is happening at more than 30 schools across Durham. It's very unique. Teachers, staff, and parents are planning walk-ins to show their support for employees facing unresolved pay issues. WRL's Laura Levine is live outside Merrick Moore Elementary School this morning. This all comes after weeks of protests have disrupted schools, and this one will not affect the school day, though, Laura. <laughs> Jeff, this is a very different site compared to what we have seen over the past few weeks now. At 645 this morning at Merrick Moore Elementary, we are going to see those groups gather here. We're talking about not only employees, but administrators, uh, staff, parents, and supporters. They're going to walk in these school building doors together to show that united front. Again, the walk-ins should not disrupt the school day. This comes as the Durham Association of Educators waits for the Board of Education to take action on the group's demand 
plans for this week, which includes to restore steps and commit to no pay cuts for February paychecks, a public explanation of why January checks did not look as expected, and to schedule a work session with DAA members for next week. Now, those participating in the walk-ins will also be speaking with parents and handing out information in the morning drop-off lines here. A rally is also scheduled for this afternoon at 3.30. All of this is playing out ahead of that special called school board meeting from 6 o'clock tonight. Uh, the district says that this is going to be an open and closed session uh, designed to discuss uh, some uh, personnel matters as well as attorney-client privilege. So we're going to stay on top of this throughout the day, of course. Laura Levine, WREL News. We're live in Durham. <laughs> All new this morning, crews in Raleigh are working to make repairs to power lines after a crash. This happened on Lynn Road near Baywood Drive just after 2.30 this morning. Video from the WRL Breaking News Tracker shows the car that crash narrowly avoided hitting a fire hydrant. No injuries were reported. We're working to learn what caused this crash and whether the driver will face charges. Raleigh City Council has decided not to take up a resolution calling for a ceasefire in Gaza. Instead, Mayor Marianne Baldwin read a statement during last night's meeting calling for peace. She also said the council could not reach a consensus to consider a resolution. Since November, the war in Gaza has dominated public comment sessions at council meetings. Hundreds of people have shown up to speak on both sides of the issue, though most called on the city to adopt a ceasefire resolution. Here's the mayor's statement and the reaction afterward. Yes, our community is conflicted, but our values are evident. We call for the protection of all civilians and humanitarian relief. We call for the safe return of all hostages. We, like many others in our country, call on world leaders to work toward an end to this conflict and a peaceful long-term solution. The city council has not issued a resolution. If it were, then the city council would have needed to have voted on it. Rather, the mayor spoke on behalf of the city council, which she can't do without a vote. Some pro-Palestinian supporters find Mayor Baldwin's statement particularly confusing because they say they have signatures from current city council members who support a ceasefire resolution. Last month, Chapel Hill's town council also declined to take up a ceasefire resolution. <laughs> And happening right now in the WREL Live Center, following that breaking news overseas about uh, Hamas proposing a three-phase plan in response to Israel's proposed proposal for a ceasefire and also delivery of humanitarian aid in exchange for the release of hostages in Gaza. This just in. This would be in three phases, each lasting about 45 days. It would include the withdrawal of Israeli troops from Gaza and a massive humanitarian effort. But an Israeli official said that there is no way that Israel will accept the counter proposal. They will not agree to a ceasefire and withdrawing forces from Gaza. They have repeatedly said they will not withdraw troops from Gaza until a complete victory over Hamas. They also said that Hamas is also asking for release of prisoners, and that is something Israel will also never agree to. Michelle, thanks. Harnett County is mourning the death of a sheriff's deputy and school resource officer who died in a crash in Lillington. Deputy Chris Johnson died Tuesday after a crash on Derrick Road off Highway 210. He had been with the Harnett County Sheriff's Office for 16 months and was a school resource officer at Highland Middle School. Before joining Harnett County, he was with the Dunn Police Department for nine years and the Sampson County Sheriff's Office for 16. There was drama at the U.S. Capitol, where you're looking live right now. As early as today, the House could vote again on impeaching Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas after last night's vote failed. Also today, the Senate plans to vote on a controversial measure involving immigration, Israel, and Ukraine. The vote to impeach Mayorkas failed by a vote, 216 to 214. But House Republicans can bring it back to the floor when Majority Leader, Leader Steve Scalise returns from cancer treatment. Meanwhile, the Senate's package deal to support border security and provide aid to Israel and Ukraine will likely not pass the House, even if senators approve it. Happening today, city leaders in Raleigh will work on plans for an alternative program to respond to mental health emergencies. The city is working to develop 
a alternative response program of unarmed first responders. Right now, the Raleigh Police Department responds to mental health and other nonviolent calls. The city will host a listening session today to learn more about the program. It's happening from 2 to 4 at NC State's Tally Stat Student Union. Other sessions are planned for later this week. A massive effort to remove 170 dogs from a property in Chatham County. Authorities are calling a puppy mill. Where those dogs will be going once the investigation wraps up. Now about this, three-time Olympic gold medalist Gabby Douglas still has Olympic dreams returning to competition. Why now and when she'll compete in her first event in eight years. And we have a big warm up in our forecast, but along with it comes the rain. I'll show you which days look wettest by the weekend and how much rain we'll see coming up. As you get into your car, tune to WRAL News Plus on your radio in Raleigh on 99.3 FM, in Durham 96.5 FM, and everywhere on 101.5 HD3. Six thirteen. It's a nice, quiet start this morning. Our skies are clear. It's a little bit breezy, so there's a bit of a wind chill to deal with, but it won't be as windy as it was yesterday. This is a live look at Goldsboro, of course, with their pretty trees. Uh, with a bit of a wind chill, it's going to feel more like mid to upper twenties this morning when you step out the door. It may feel like close to forty at lunchtime, and then in the mid to upper forties this afternoon. Our actual highs will be in the low to mid fifties, so it's not a big difference. But you know, kind of when you think about dressing for forties versus fifties, that's that's what you should think about today. Uh, lots of twenties showing up here. Twenty eight in Lewisburg, 29 in Tarboro, 25 right now in South Hill. It's 29 in Southern Pines. It's 33 in Goldsboro, and that's one of the warmest spots that, that we're finding out there. So walking the dogs this morning, it's chilly. Um, this evening, temperatures drop back into the 40s pretty quickly. All right, Elizabeth, it is now 614 as we take a look at traffic around the Triangle. Still no crashes reported anywhere in Wake, Durham, or Orange County. We're looking good on those major routes this morning. Want to check in with Durham and the major approaches there. A one-minute slowdown showing up overall on westbound 98 coming in from Highway 50 back toward 885. But that ride out of Chapel Hill on 40 eastbound from 15501 out to 885, delay-free at the moment. Renee? A massive effort at this Chatham County property removed 170 dogs from the property. Sky 5 flew over the site yesterday where five more dogs were found dead. The Sheriff's Office has help from volunteers with the Bizzle Pet Foundation and the Animal Rescue Corps. The Sheriff called the operation a puppy mill. Bizzle's Director of Operations Kim Album says the dogs will be sent to shelters throughout the country for adoption when the investigation is over. This case was really heartbreaking and completely avoidable. And I'm just, I'm very grateful that law enforcement is there in, in addressing this today. Two women are charged in the case. Alicia Culberson already faced 10 counts of animal cruelty. Kelly Privet was also charged with 10 counts yesterday. The Sheriff's Office removed 44 dogs from the property last week. Six of them were dead. Three-time Olympic gold medalist Gabby Douglas is returning to gymnastics competition for the first time in eight years. In an exclusive interview with NBC News, Douglas says she misses the competition. WRL's Ken Smith is here with more on this surprise announcement, Ken. First, Simone Biles, now her former teammate Gabby Douglas suiting up to make a run at another Olympic medal. Now, from this video she posted to Instagram, she is clearly on a mission to return to competitive form. Douglas took home gold as part of the U.S. women's team at both the London and Rio Games. She says the fire still burns to compete and she has her eyes set on the Summer Games in Paris. I never really announced a retirement. I just loved i i didn't want to end the sport how i did in 2016 i wanted to take a step back and work on myself and work on my mental state and i love gymnastics I, like i said i love pushing myself uh every single day and i love the sport so i never wanted to walk away on a bad day well, Douglas's first step in trying to make the five-woman U.S. Olympics gymnastics team starts February 24th at the Winter Cup in Louisville, Kentucky. At age 28, she will be the oldest gymnast at that event. Now, Douglas says she's been spending a lot of time on the skills, uh, uh, like uh, uh, floor exercises, the balance beam, but she's focused a lot on the bars that you've seen here. She says she really wants to do well in that particular competition. And Jeff, you know, she did really well in 2012. She didn't do as well in 2016. 
2016. So that's why I think she still has something to prove. And the fire still burns, mm -hmm. right? Everybody's going to talk about 28 years of age because she'll be going against, right. you know, 15, 16 year old kids out there. But she <laughs> yeah. has life perspective now. So, yeah. you know, if she wants it badly enough. She'll go. Looking forward to it. Mm -hmm. The death of country singer Toby Keith is sparking renewed calls from doctors to pay attention to signs of stomach cancer. Keith was diagnosed with stomach cancer in the fall of 2022. Doctors say the symptoms of stomach cancer can appear relatively harmless, but they deserve your attention. They can include heartburn, acid reflux, anemia, nausea, ulcers, pain after eating, sudden weight loss, or feeling full after eating small amounts. The average age of diagnosis is 68, and men have a slightly higher risk. Two new otters are now calling North Carolina home. The two, named Millie and Shiny, are at the NC Aquarium at Fort Fisher. They're Asian small clawed otters, and they're cute. They made the trip all the way from Hong Kong to New York and now here. Mills, or Millie, I should say, is a female, and Shiny is a male born in 2018 and 2020. The aquarium's goal is to help save and provide a better life for them. Oh, they're so cute. I don't know oh if it's goodness. otter weather out otters. there, but well, I think they can adjust to just about anything. They've had, they're world travelers They as have well. nice <laughs> thick fur, so they'll be, they'll be just fine out there. Um, yeah, just put your thick coat on and, and you'll be fine too. <laughs> it is, it is chilly out there. Yeah. Our skies are clear. We're starting to see that sun uh, brighten things up there in Goldsboro. Just a touch. Um, Apex looking good. Chapel Hill is clear, courtesy of Top of the Hill Restaurant. And of course, uh, there's Fayetteville uh, right there, our newsroom uh, on Hay Street. All right, let's talk about this big system that's marching across the country. This is going to help to bring us rain uh, for the weekend and early next week. It's the same system, though, of course, it's been moving through California. Um, there's still some rain falling in Southern California, but it is tapering off today. They've seen the worst of it. Of course, lots of cleanup for folks there. As the system moves eastward, lots of snow with this. I was just looking at the forecast for uh, parts of uh, the mountains of Colorado where they're looking at, you know, 10 to 20 inches possible with this system. And of course, a lot of rain with it, too, as it moves eastward. We're not likely to have major problems out of this, but by early next week, those rainfall totals may start to add up a little bit. Right now, we're looking at dry conditions. The brown shaded area is where the air is very dry. So we're going to feel dry conditions today, again, with a northerly flow. And then back to the west, you can see the gray and the green. That's more cloud cover and moisture that will arrive as we get into, say, Friday. Friday, as a matter of fact, will be mostly cloudy. This is 9 o'clock Friday, where most of the rain is still back into the mountains. During the day Saturday, that rain tries to creep in. This is 5 o'clock Saturday, so it doesn't look terribly wet on Saturday, but it will be cloudy with some isolated showers. Now, Saturday's likely to be really warm, so you may be able to squeeze out uh, a little bit of time outside when it isn't raining to enjoy some warm temperatures. Sunday morning, we start off with some rain, but during the afternoon and evening, it looks like that rain will slide southward, and then it really rolls back in on Monday. So Monday is likely to be the wettest day, maybe even into Tuesday, and we're talking about potentially a couple of inches uh, by Monday and Tuesday. But initially, say Friday through Sunday, when the rain will be lighter, it's not going to add up to too much. All three days together, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, likely to be a quarter of an inch to maybe a half an inch. But then we add Monday to it, and look at this. We jump up to uh, an inch and a half in some places, two and a half inches in some other spots. So we'll be watching Monday carefully. I don't, I don't think we'll necessarily see any flooding, but um, that's going to be a more significant rainfall for us Monday, possibly into Tuesday. We definitely need some rain in eastern North Carolina. You see the yellow shaded areas. That's where we're looking at um, only about, uh, say, a, a 30 to 50 percent uh, of the uh, a normal rainfall for the last 30 days, but plenty of rain in the western part of the state. Super Bowl forecast on Sunday, of course, in Las Vegas. It should be nice, 55 degrees. That's a little on the cool side for Las Vegas with some sunshine, but of course it's inside the dome, so no worries. For us, on Sunday, there could be a few light showers, 62 degrees at game time. The latest runs of the computer models really keep most of the rain Sunday in the morning, so it may be dry for your Super Bowl party. It'll be mild at 65. We turn cooler by Tuesday. Back to 52, Brian. It's 621 right now as we Check traffic. Still no crashes reported anywhere in the Triangle. We are all clear in Wake, Durham, and Orange County, Raleigh, Durham, Chapel Hill, Hillsboro. All of those major routes are looking fine. We want to head out to the Beltline for that live camera at New Bern Avenue. Everything's moving along well on the westbound side. No delays right now from 87 out to Wade Avenue. It's a smooth trip through Glenwood Avenue. If you're heading out in the next little while, don't forget you can listen to us live on the radio at 99.3 FM in Raleigh and 96.5 FM in Durham. Brian, thanks. The search for a suspect in a Fayetteville robbery ends with gunshots. As the police was pulling up, we heard pop, pop. And I guess somebody got shot. 
How the employees who were robbed helped police track the man down and what led to an officer shooting him. And a star-studded Super Bowl commercial includes a reunion of two Friends alums trying to remember their past. The other stars experiencing forgetfulness in this ad coming up in What's Trending. This What's Trending report sponsored by Rug and Home. Jennifer Aniston and David Schwimmer are reuniting on the screen in a new Super Bowl ad, but there's a twist. There is. Brian Schrader here now with that and What's Trending. The former Friends stars are in an ad for Uber Eats, all about remembering things by forgetting other things. Jen. Hey. Hi. Oh. Oh. Um, okay. Have we met? I played a halftime show someday, man. The joke is, because you have to explain the joke here, the joke is that it's important to remember all the stuff that you can get on Uber Eats. See? You get it? It's the joke, you see? Uh, the ad also features cameos from David and Victoria Beckham, Jelly Roll, and Usher. Uh, like who could forget Rachel and Ross? Pretty cool to see them reunited. They haven't shared a screen together since the Friends reunion special on Max in 2021. But now who's going to order from Uber Eats today? Because oh, now my. I'm feeling like some breakfast. Yeah, well, don't forget. Right. <laughs> yeah. It's on Brian. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck. Uh, <laughs> speaking of Usher, after the Super Bowl halftime show on Sunday, Usher is going to be getting ready for his new tour. He announced the dates for the past, present, future tour yesterday. Starts August 20th in Washington, and then he's going to play the Spectrum Center in Charlotte, October 22nd. And before all of that, his new album is coming out Friday. Yeah, his ninth album. How about that? And 24 cities. What, what does Usher not have a hand in right now, right? Super Bowl, a 24-city tour. And you mentioned, Brian, he's in D.C., uh, he's in Charlotte, he's going to be in Atlanta. So there's some regional opportunities to see Usher. A big year for mm -hmm. Usher. This morning on Today, Donna Kelsey joins the show. She's getting ready to head to Las Vegas to support her son Travis in the Super Bowl. She'll talk about football. Taylor Swift and her favorite game day recipe. Catch it on today, coming up at 7, right after our news here on WREL. A new program to help people who are experiencing a mental health crisis in Raleigh is in the works right now. Just ahead, how you can share your thoughts on those plans today, but what its future should look like. And bundle up heading out the door. Not only is the temperature chilly, but there's a bit of a wind chill as well. It'll feel like 20s in a lot of places this morning and 40s this afternoon. I'll show you what it will feel like where you are when you walk out the door. Coming up. And we have a live look right now. Merrick Moore Elementary School in Durham, where in about 15 minutes, teachers, staff, and community members will be walking in, participating in a walk-in at the school. It is one of more than 30 schools in Durham where this is happening, part of a show of unity for staff pay concerns in that district. We're there live when they do that. 